Hi guys, welcome back to Get Your Play Online. My name is Mackenzie and uh, welcome back to Sensory Time. Today we are going to be making these really super fun nature ice cubes or nature soup. Um, so things that you're going to need today, you're going to need a bin like I have here. Um, I have mine filled about halfway with water. Um, it should be really, really cold water to make sure your ice cubes stay really big. I have some water, a muffin tin. Um, you can also use an ice cube tray if you don't want your ice cube, or if you don't want your nature soup ice cubes as big. Um, I got really big ones, so I decided to use a muffin tin. I have some regular washable paint. If you don't have some washable paint, you can always feel free to use some food coloring um, or whatever you have on hand. Um, and then I also have my nature supplies. I have some flowers, some pine needles, some sticks, and just different things like that. And you'll also need a toothpick. All right, I'm going to play some music while we play together. So let me just get that started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to pour some water into our muffin tins. I'm going to tilt you down so you can see what I'm doing a little better. So I'm going to fill my muffin tins about halfway. If we fill them halfway, it gives us just a little bit more room to work with. So I'm just going to do three at a time. I think my first one, I am going to do some leaves. So I'm going to leave a few whole ones, but some of them I'm going to crunch up so that way they can kind of get look really cool in the water when they melt. So I'm going to crunch this up just a little bit. And then I'm going to put a whole leaf in there. Just like that. And then I'm going to take some paint. For this one, I'm going to use some blue. We're just going to pour just a bit in there. You just need just a little drop. And then I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm just going to stir it around. Until my water becomes blue. All right, and then make sure that all of your leaves are in there. And then mine is in this one. All right, so now we are going to do a flower. So I'm gonna do pink with my flower. I'm just gonna take a couple petals off my flower. Just like that. Pour some paint in. Just a little bit. I like to pour my paint in before my flowers because I like the flowers to stay the same color. And I want them to float a little bit better. And they float a little bit better if they don't have paint all over them. So now I'm going to kind of break up my flower petals. I'm going to break up one and I'm going to leave one hole. I'm going to just leave one hole and I'm just going to kind of put it near the bottom. Just like that. And then I have some pine needles. So I'm going to kind of break them apart. So I have just the pine needles. I'm just going to sprinkle them in there. Alright, so now I have a ton of pine cones 
in my paint and I'm gonna be green in this one because I think it looks so cool so I'm gonna pour quite a bit of paint in that one because I want the green to be really really bright the more paint that you put in there the brighter your colors are gonna be and it's gonna look so cool There's my green one all done. All right, so now I'm gonna pour some more water in a muffin round, about halfway. And then I think I'm gonna take some sticks this time. And so I took some sticks. I'll put my sticks in there. My sticks are about this big. If you find some really big ones, all you have to do is just kind of snap them and they should be good to go. All Almost really tough to break. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna do some orange. Just pour it in there. Grab your toothpick and just stir. All right, that looks pretty good. So for my next one, I'm gonna pour some more water in. Making sure I only fill it up about halfway. And then I think I'm going to do a pine cone. So I'm going to kind of go like that and just take some of the pine cone pieces off. And then I'm going to break this pine cone apart just a little bit. Just like that. And I'm going to do some yellow. Right, and then I'll just stir this around. Just like that. And take some more water and pour it in my muffin tin. About halfway. And then I have a few different kinds of leaves, so I'm gonna do another one of my leaves. So this one, I'm gonna break apart really, really, really small. Because this one is gonna float really, really nicely on top. So I'm gonna break it into really, really small pieces. If you have crunchier leaves, you may just be able to crunch them in your hands too. I think I'm going to do purple for this one. Perfect. I'm just going to stir it. And I'm going to fill my whole muffin tin with different um, items. I may repeat some items and do some different colors with them. Um, that's just what I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to pour some more water in there. And I'm going to take, I have some really, really tiny flowers. Grab them. I think that's it. I have these really tiny yellow flowers. That's the next one I'm going to do. I'm going to drop those in. 
I think I'm going to do some white with those. Now, if you're doing this with food coloring, you really should only need maybe one or two drops per muffin pin or per muffin round. Um, because the food coloring is a little bit more colored than your paint is going to be, you don't need quite as much of it. But once this melts, I'll show you here in a minute, because mine is just about all the way melted, it makes some really cool colors in our water. I think I'm going to take some pine needles again and get some water. I think this time I'm going to do some red. Just like that. This time, I think I'm going to mix in the red first, just to see the pine, coat, the pine needles flow a little bit better. And this one, I'm going to leave kind of in bigger pieces like this. just like that and then I'm going to kind of take my toothpick and just kind of make sure they're in there so that way they aren't sticking up too too much. Alright, take some more water and I think this time I'm going to do some black. Mix it. And it kind of becomes this super cool gray color in the water. I think I'm going to take some more sticks. Like that. Let's place them on in there. Like that. And I think this one I'm also going to put some leaves in to kind of give it a little bit more texture. Alright. So that one is done. Do some more water. I have three more left. Alright, I think I'm going to do this really pretty blue color that I have next. A little drop. I'm gonna do some flowers again. I'll mix. I'm gonna take a few more of my flower petals and I'm gonna take the middle part of my flower. I have a really cool middle part too. Take those and lay them in there. Take that one. And then I'm just going to kind of break them a little bit. But leave them in pretty big pieces. And I'm just going to take my toothpick. Just kind of coat them up and cover them with water. Alright. Two more. I'm going to do some yellow. My yellow is a little bit clumpier, so it's a little bit harder to mix in. But just keep mixing until it's all the way combined. And I'm going to do some of my other types of leaves. I'm just going to kind of leave them in big pieces. Like that. Cover them with water. And last one. Hmm. I 
pink. We'll do some of just the centers of our flowers. These they look pretty cool. Kind of sprinkle them all in there. I think this one I'm going to do pink. And these look so cool guys i cannot wait to see what yours look like make sure you leave a comment below what yours look like you love seeing them and i'm going to scoot this just a little bit closer and i'm going to show you what mine look like so i can't tip it too much so you can see the different colors like that um so the next step that you'll do is you're going to freeze these overnight or you can freeze them for a few hours. I froze mine overnight and they stay pretty well. So when they are all melted, you can play with them while they're frozen. That's totally fine. Um, and that's really good too because you can like feel the different textures inside of the ice cubes. But it, see how it makes some cool watercolors. Let's scoot this closer. See how it made some kind of cool watercolors? You see the purple and the pink. And you have this really cool and it feels really cool on your fingers because you can feel like the pine needles and you can feel the sticks. It's just really, really fun to play. I'm just going to wash or dry my hands off just a little bit. Um, and then I have a really cool book that we're going to read together. All right, this one is called Seeds and Trees. I'm going to pause our music while we read. And this is by Brandon Walden and illustrated by Kristen and Kevin Howardshell. In the land of the king lived a special young prince who loved climbing trees and playing with friends. He lived in a castle overlooking the sea. He played in a field with his two kinds of trees. You see the prints right here? He carried a satchel slung low on his waist to contain all the seeds he might want to exchange. Each, each seed was a word that someone had spoken. Each seed was collected, a trinket, a token. It didn't quite matter from where it had come, a stranger, a friend, a whisper made up, he rose every morning to water the seeds from each of the works he had already received. You see the prince watering his plants? When someone spoke nicely, not anything mean, they'd hand him a seed whose true essence was green. But sometimes the seeds would come bringing pain. Seeds of dark color whose trees produce shame. You see the different kinds of seeds? Several dark seeds grew quickly, then withered. Others remained to grow slowly and, and, and unhindered. At the end of each day, he'd admire the seeds and go plant the new ones and play in his trees. The trunks and the branches of dark trees were laden with thistles and thorns, causing pain as he scaled them. Climbing these trunks and these branches was tricky. Each part of the tree that he had grasped was quite prickly. Each time the prince climbed, he was bruised and was slit. Yet trees are for climbing, so through pain he persists. But each time he climbed up, his trees clothed in green, he felt safe and healed as those trees weren't mean. 
His green trees were strong, and they welcomed his touch. Their branches grew fruit he could eat or clutch. He could sit at the base or climb to the peak. He could rest in the branches or play hide and seek. As years passed, he noticed his green trees were weakening. The trunks at the base of the trees needed strengthening. Now the soil was hardened as life was escaping. Their canopies were, their canopies were covered. His dark trees had shaded them. Let's see. He would plant his green seeds and dark seeds beside. Then they'd war with each other and try to survive. His green trees were strongest with plenty of light, but his dark trees grew stronger in the darkness of night. They shared the same water and sunlight to grow, but the dark trees were hiding the fruit that would show. The green trees caused life, joy, and peace to grow near, but the dark seeds killed soil and grew trees clothed in fear. The field the prince planted had started to show many trees of two kinds and the fruit that had grown. The fruit fell like seeds to the soil down below, filled with seeds to be gathered or given to sow. The young prince grew strong and became a young man. He continued to plant the seeds placed in his hand. He invited some friends to come plant his trees, but some liked to play in his trees from the dark seeds. He had one special friend who always spoke true. Her, word, her words filled with grace, as good friends always do. She, spoke, she never spoke harshly and never spoke lies. She always spoke gently with loving replies. She always gave green seeds and never took back. She never ran out. There was never a lack. Her satchel was filled to the brim overflowing with green seeds, not dark seeds, each one for selling. She watched the prince till plant and water his grove. She watched and she waited until asked to go. One day the prince said, hey friend, come along. She humbly agreed and began singing a song. To the grove, to the grove, we will look down below, all the roots in the soil and the trees that have grown. We will care for your green seeds and even plant more seeds, but your dark trees will fall as this new life is sown. As he walked in his field with his friend by his side, the young prince took note as his trees came alive. Green trees swayed not to the sound of the tune. But the dark trees stood stiff, clenched their fists, and seemed rude. After long years of planting and watering seeds, they'd grown to mighty powerful trees. The prince reminisced as he entered the grove. He thought back to each tree and the seed that was sown. He admitted the beauty the green seeds created, but noticed that the roots, they were sadly ill-fated. His friend came prepared and brought tools along. The prince hadn't noticed, but his friend was quite strong. The tools that she carried were weathered and humble, a pickaxe, a saw, and an old rusty shovel. The friend that asked the prince to please pick out a tree, one causing pain that he'd rather not see. The prince pointed up to the skinny dark mass. His friend said, watch this, and then she took out her axe. With one mighty swing, the tree fell into the ground. Then his friend dug her shovel deep, deep, deeply down. The root had to die and be plucked from the dirt. Then a green seed was planted and covered with earth. The prince exclaimed, can you cut down more trees? His friend said, oh yes, and I have plenty of seeds. Many dark roots had tunneled so deep that it took a while to dig underneath. 
Dark roots were wrapped round the tree everywhere. So the friend showed the prince how to tend them with care. Her tools came in handy, the axe, the saw, and the shovel, and others the friend had brought here to the struggle. Then came the day when his forest was green, not a dark tree was spotted, not any were mean. His friends then surprised the grown prince with some gifts, some tools for his new daily watering shifts. She instructed the prince not to plant the dark seeds, but to go to the cliff to cast them out to sea. The prince held the dark uh, held the green seeds who were all saved, but he tossed the dark seeds off the cliff to the waves. Then he traveled to new fields abounding with trees, making sure that he had packed his old satchel with, sleep, with seeds. To the grove, to the grove, we will look down below, at the roots, at the soil, and the trees that have grown. We will care for the trees and even plant more seeds, but the dark trees will fall as this new life is sown. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and playing with me. I had so much fun. Um, make sure you take some pictures of what yours look like, and we can't wait to see you until next time. See you this afternoon. Bye, guys.